Homelander doesn't like anybody, but about your character said, uh, you've been great. So <laughs> coming from him is, is pretty scary, <laughs> no? Yeah. There is a, a mutual respect and affection, you know, that we've seen from Homelander to Noir and Noir to Homelander so far. And I think it's because Homelander can trust Noir. You know, if he needs something taken care of, he can send Noir and Noir will get it done. You know, and likewise, you know, I think Noir sees the powerful things of Homelander and as a, as a fighter, as a ninja and a warrior, he can respect those things, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think they have a good dynamic so far. These characters are, in theory, uh, superheroes, but instead they are super villain. So how important it is to give power to the right hands, in your opinion? I mean, it is very important, but that's what this story is about. It's about what happens when power corrupts, you know? And so we see that Homelander becomes a narcissist sociopath that a train you know becomes a drug drug addict the deep you know has you know harasses people and you know has to deal with that um and Maeve is riddled with the guilt of you know her past actions and so we see the corrupting influence of power and i think you know one of the powerful powerful things about the boys is the the longer we go into this story we see that nobody's inherently all good or all bad you know even homelander with all of his you know he's the evil dude in many ways in the show we see why he's like that we see that there's this hurt boy underneath everything that didn't get love and if any of us didn't got got the the, the treatment homelander got growing up we might end up that way you know and so i, I don't know <laughs> Maybe, maybe, not, maybe, but not, I don't. <laughs> not to the full extent, but we, but we kind of see that, like, what happens when you don't get love, you know, and how mm -hmm. important love is, you know, and so that I think was important. And you look at someone like Annie, you know, who is, you know, our heroine, you know, throughout it. And in episode six, she accidentally kills somebody, mm -hmm. you know, so where, and then you look at Butcher and the boys and they're apparently supposed to be good, but Frenchie kills someone, Butcher kills people. So where is the line between good and evil? And, you know, it, it, it blurs with both of these teams. Speaking about love, I, I love the fact that your character has a, a soft spot for animals. <laughs> In your opinion, how important is uh, loving animals? There's hope for, for him. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think one of the best things about Noir is his empathy. And mm -hmm. it doesn't exist for everybody, but it definitely exists for, for animals and for, for kids. You know, he has a soft spot for those, you know, vulnerable, you know, animals and, and kids in that way. Um, and I think that it's a really good um, insight into who he is or a dimension of himself. You know, you see the ruthless killer, but you also see this person with a heart. You know, and that's part of the mystery of who Noir is. Why is he that way? Why does he love and have a very easy time ripping someone to shreds? You know, that's part of the mystery, but that's also the core of his character. I love the fact that your character uh, is almost like uh, a character from silent cinema. Uh, is uh, like the Mando in The Mandalorian. He doesn't speak, but uh, he moves. Uh, you are a martial artist. How, how fun was uh, speaking literally through your body? It's so much fun. You know, that's one of my favorite things to do. Uh, movement, you know, and athletics and, you know, martial arts has been such a core part of my life that to be able to bring that to this role has been a dream come true, you know? And you know, one of my favorite quotes is the funny thing about a mask is no matter how hard you try, it's always a self portrait. And the notion behind that is even in choosing a particular mask, the choice you make says something about you. Even if you're wearing something that covers you from head to toe, 
the way you move, the way you react says something. So we're always revealing ourselves with what we do, no matter what we say, you know? And that's why it's so fun to play no more because you get to take away the words and just look at his behavior. I know that you love um, playing and writing music. Um, Black Noir is, is, uh, is almost mute. Uh, if you could choose one um, type of music for him, what would it be? Oh man, that's a good one. You know, I think, you know, so far we've seen, um, we've seen, you know, Noir likes classical music. You know, he's played the mm -hmm. piano, he has a classical music where tell him. But he's also kind of quirky. I think, you know, if Noir had a playlist, there, you know, there might be some polka music on there. Um, <laughs> there might be some Simon and Garfunkel, you know, there, you know, there's a lot, you know, that, that he listens to that doesn't, that would go counter to what you expect. You know, you might expect to hear some heavy metal, you know, or some, you know, hard rock or something like that. And maybe there are a couple a couple of songs, a couple of hip hop songs there, but but really, yeah, polka, Simon and Garfunkel, classical mm -hmm. music, these odd things that you wouldn't necessarily expect. You've um, played uh, many characters that are from a uh, nerdy show, I think about Supernatural here. Um, I want to know if you're a, a nerd person and if it's so, uh, how, what does it mean being nerd for you yeah yeah like when i think of nerd i think of it's funny because that you know the nerd culture is so mainstream you know like it's cool now you know and so i would i would consider myself someone who loves that you know that genre you know in those types of of shows and stories you know uh so you know supernatural psych arrow you know i'm a big pokemon lover You know, I loved Pokemon when I was a kid, you know, and I say, I, I'm so proud of that. Like I have a Charmander hat in my closet. Um, and so to be a part of, you know, a superhero show where we get to delve into this, this, um, you know, fantasy superhero world, that's, you know, the, one of the best things I can hope for. I think that Black Noir would love uh, Pokemon stuff. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> because, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. talking to the fans on Twitter and I was like, who do you think Noir's Pokemon team would be? Yeah. You know? Who like, would it be? <laughs> personally, I, I love Charmander and I think Noir would really like Charmander too. Um, some mm -hmm. people threw up Bulbasaur and I get the Bulbasaur vibe. Um, someone said Ghastly. Someone said Mr. Mime. Someone said Greninja. You know, <laughs> someone also said mm -hmm. Zekrom. It was funny, we had this whole seven Pokemon team up that we were designing and it was like, okay, who would Homelander get? And he got like Mewtwo and Machamp. And we went like all down the list. It was really fun. Speaking about Supernatural, are you glad that uh, in the next season uh, you will meet again? Um, Jensen Echoes is a, a new member of the cast. Yeah, I'm so excited that Jensen mm -hmm. gets to join us, you know? Uh, I got to be on Supernatural and that was, that was super fun to, to be on his show because I loved Smallville growing up and he was in the first season of Smallville I started watching. And that's what got me back into superheroes. Like I loved it as a kid, but then as a teenager, it was Smallville that brought it to life for me. So to watch him as a teenager and then get to be on his show and then have him now come be on The Boys It's so awesome and I'm so excited for that. It's going to be amazing. We, we see uh, in this season that studying history is really important because uh, if we don't know history, you can make the same mistakes again and again and again. So in your opinion, how important it is to know history? It's extremely important, you know, because I think There's this, there's this saying that history doesn't repeat itself, but it often rhymes. So the exact same thing doesn't necessarily happen, but something just like that. And I think in our society, like in the West today, we are seeing the potential for that. And the reason it may not go down that path is because people know history or the people who do and are aware are 
responding to what's happening right now and trying to prevent things from going down that path. So it's really important to know history uh, because I think human psychology in many ways remains the same throughout generations. So you have to realize the potential traps that we can fall into as a society and work against them when you see them coming up. And the boys is a great example of that where you have Nazi Germany um, <laughs> yeah. you know, in 1944, you know, that was defeated, but it's now rearing its ugly head again and it's disguised, you know? And I think when Stormfront says, people like what I have to say, they just don't like the word Nazi. I think that's one of the most powerful lines of the series and realizing that that sentiment is still very much alive in society, it's just had to kind of like crawl under the earth. And then when it gets a chance, it just starts to peek back up. So knowing that that's a pattern and knowing that's, that's something that society can be susceptible to, you know, we have to fight and resist it when it starts to arise. Okay, thank you so much. Amazing job. I love your character, even if it scares me. <laughs> thank you so much. Bye. Yeah.